just as a public service announcement, always remember, kids, when you hook up with an infinite source of resources, always be sure to wear a void upgrade. The storage system that you prevent jamming in may be your own. Yep. Would you look at that? Filtering correctly. So, now when I have a third ore to put in here, I'll just put another diamond pipe right here, and I'll tell it to route whatever liquids are going that way, that way, and then split it again, and I'll just continue the line on out this way, and, you know, move the pipe whenever, and yeah. Now... I think we might have a bottleneck. This gold, the, well, this buildcraft pipe, it tends to get full up with liquid and it stays in there for quite a while while the casting basin is casting out. I could potentially, instead of going right into the casting basin, I could pipe it out into something like a mariculture tank just so that the pipe empties out straight away and that'll act as a buffer going down into the casting basin and and you know because you see that yeah we aren't producing ore faster than we're smelting it and faster than we're casting it it's just getting stuck in the pipe but i think i will only do that if this proves to be a problem if and when uh, okay, OBS has earned time in the punishment room. It has failed to record the last couple of videos that I tried to do with it, and I was kind of in the building place, so I wasn't, you know, checking to make sure every time. So, let's run this through. As you can see, I decided that the tank buffer idea was easy enough just to do. And we have two lines of processing on our metals now, to the yellow to the red. It's running in two lines so that we don't have that color routing problem. And you notice that when they're separate colors, they actually don't connect with each other even. We have all of that processing done. This line is running that way just to fill out the space between them a little bit and so I don't block the entrance. <sighs> Upstairs, I discovered that the cardboard box is compatible with holes in reality. So I started to terraform our Botania era, area. However, you should note that it is not compatible with naked nodes. It only works for those pure nodes that are inside the logs. Don't worry though, we have other ways of moving these things around. Uh, what else did I do? What else did I do? I do not remember what else I did. I am sorry about that. I will be... I will be doing horrible, horrible things to OBS in retaliation. One thing you might want to note is that somehow I got this forestry copper as versus this Tycon copper. I think I might have got this forestry copper just by smelting ore, in, or just by putting it in a furnace instead of smelting it. Anyway, once you have a storage drawer up, it will do ore dictionary for you. So I can just put these ingots in there and they convert into the Tycon ingots. So we don't have to worry about storing a billion different mod libraries of ingots. Very nice. Ravioli, ravioli, give me the Carzoni. Congratulations. For your room, I picked out race car red and electric blue. I figured those colors would suit you just fine. Enjoy yourself. Smooth gameplay. Smooth gameplay.
Yeah, I might have to knock out all that pretty glass and replace it for something that's not transparent. Because apparently, just looking at the thing is a Medusa effect. So, um, yeah. I'll stick to the color schemes, though. I will stick to the color schemes. Actually, this is a good opportunity for me to talk about something. So, you've seen this focus pouch sitting in my bag. That contains spell things I can put on my wand. Right now, it only contains this one. I was hoping it would be more useful, but it turns out that, well, it's only useful for things like this where I only have one layer thick to do. I think there's a more useful thing I can do with it, but we'll get to that. Anyway, when you hold out your wand, you can shift F to put whatever focus is on your wand in the bag, and you can hold down F to get a quick select menu to select a spell. So I can get a whole collection of focuses. They'll all go into that focus pouch. They won't clutter up my inventory, and I can select them really quickly just by holding out my wand. Anyway, this is the Wand of Equal Trade. And it works by allowing me to shift click on a block to select it. And you see there up in the corner, it now says I have essence blocks selected and I have 127 of them. And then I can right click and I can replace a whole swath of blocks for them. So long as I have these essence blocks in my inventory to do it. And it does in fact put those essence glass back in my inventory. Although I think if it was just regular glass, it would just break. So yeah, this decoration job isn't going to take me too long at all. Now this does cost a tiny little bit of V each time, but it's not too bad. Yeah, see? You saw here, when I, when I get to another one, right over here, Watch this thing up in the corner here. You'll see the red arrows. That cost me Ignis Ordo and Perdicio V to cast that spell. So, eh, I don't know if I like the grid pattern. Uh, I guess, I guess I'll just do this whole thing and then I'll see how it looks. Smooth gameplay. Slightly less laggy. Smooth gameplay, yeah, still a little bit choppy. Well, I don't love the look of it, but I don't hate it. I think it's good enough. Yeah, it's good enough. And more importantly, while it's not exactly a joy to play in this area, it's bearable. And it might even get better as I button up the entire structure. We'll see. So, it might have been a mistake to terraform this land. You cannot tell, but it is raining right now. I have installed the No More Rain mod by Insane AU. The weather will still trigger, the sky will still get dark, mobs will still spawn everywhere, but there are no more rain particles and no more loud hissy sound. Because if it was just ugly and noisy, I would deal with it, but all the rain particles on top of the already laggy Batania area, it made the game unplayable. So I had to turn it off. Yep. Okay. You can thank this person as being partially responsible for my decision to upload a save for all of you. So, I hope you enjoy your time in this in this uh, purple, pink, and orange room. Enjoy yourself. Okay, let's test a couple of routing ideas. First of all, let's make sure our yellow line actually properly works. Yes, it do. Now, I have a hypothesis about how these diamond fluid pipes are really working. I think that when they are filtered, they just cause a priority flow for that liquid in that direction. When they are unfiltered, 
they should still allow liquid in that direction. So even though this diamond pipe has a filter in it, I think it should still allow gold into its green side here. And if it does, that means I'm going to have a very yes, 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 yes. So now I can just filter that to green and put that bucket back in there. And you see, that's really what decided me to make this fluid buffer idea. Not only did it, you know, not only does it make this less error prone, but it makes my life a little bit easier. And that's really my primary motivation. So, what this means is in the future, when it is time to extend these casting lines outwards, I can just leave the center line unfiltered and that will allow it to just flow forward. Because I believe that also once, once a side has a filter, it doesn't allow anything else, I think. But yeah, that'll be something to test. And I'm getting ready to start my next metal anyway, so that will be tested very, very shortly. Okay, let's see if my hunch about how these buildcraft pipes works is more or less correct. So far it's looking very, very promising. I've had this diamond pipe sitting here completely unfiltered, and the priority has been to put the iron and the tin in their appropriate places. So, let's put some aluminum in there, and let's see if it goes. That's, yeah, that's tin. You see it going into its appropriate place. Here comes the aluminum. There goes the aluminum. Yes! So, yeah, this works perfectly, perfectly well. This is red direction. Just leave it unfiltered until the appropriate time. Oh, and you note that I only have the one tank set here. If I had the two of them here, it would fill both of them equally. So, you know, just only have the one destination possible. And also note that these mechanical pipes are separated by some uh, block covers. I mean, I could separate them with a configurator, but it's possible that while I was, that, you know, while you're setting that up, they could connect and fill up. So, you know, just, just put a cover on and then put the pipes down. Okay, so, smeltery design confirmed for working. I just need to fill it all out. All right. In case any of you were wondering, just like how far ahead I tend to film. Right here, where I am sitting right now in the future past, whatever, you know, time travel, I just got episode 17 uploaded. So, uh, you, sir, if you're just getting home when you're watching this episode, I hope it helps you relax. Ooh. Certus quartz, <laughs> certus quartz seeds. Yes, 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 yes. Breed these, breed these. Get all of them. Okay, I have constructed a roof for the final layer of grow beds, just so that. I have a place to build the walls up to, seal it all off. I decided on obsidian for the roof. Get a kind of tritone thing going on with with the mostly cobblestone and marble lower hair, and then the marble second layer, and the obsidian roof. Nice kind of, yeah. And with all the colors of the walls, it should be very pretty. Hey, I finally encountered another thing that requires actual processing. This redstone essence, it's technically used for decorations and stuff, but I just want redstone. So, I have basically this entire wall dedicated for processing space, and if necessary, I can expand it out forward. But yeah, 
I think I made this room a little bit too big. Still. I'm watching this pipe is freaking hypnotic. Ooh. Okay. And there you go. Just a fun little thing to note, I was setting up this chunk loader here and I noticed that uh, in this central chunk, because these things do all the chunks around them only, the uh, 3 by 3 area, got this one covered, and yes I checked, this does cover all the crops down there, got this one covered, got this one, that one, and all three down there, so yeah. I did not plan for that. It is just by sheer luck and coincidence that my farm is perfectly covered by one world anchor. And just in case some of the processing area is not covered by it, I think the Batania Managen one covers the rest. So, uh, that's lucky. You can see I've got another item on the processing line, diamonds. And you can see the pattern I'll be following. I'll just be continuing the line down over here. I might just, like, either move the cable or hop over it with trim if it goes that far. Very simple and easy. Huh? <laughs> well, that pretty much describes me right now anyway. I reinstalled Optifine B... Stack Overflow. Uh, I'll look into that. Anyway, I reinstalled Optifine because the lag is real, and Optifine is the only thing I found that helps. So, I'm just going with it for now. When it gets to dealing with that graphical error we got with Thomcraft nodes, I will just figure something out. And I will look into that stack overflow. Okay, I have spent, no joke, about four hours trying every single different set of settings I can, and we still have this OpenGL error coming up. So, it only pops up every once every few minutes. Sometimes it floods the chat, sometimes it'll stay away for, like, a while. I, I, I'll just deal with it. The good news is, I figured out, yeah, no more flashy Bernie thing when I get near the Thomcraft node, so there's that going for me at least, which is nice. Okay. I quite like that name. That, that name, I think it's good for a golem. There you go. Just in case you were wondering, all of these potion petal seeds that I made they are used for, of course, making potions. You can just eat them as they are, but that just gives you the effect for, you know, only a couple of seconds. But if you mix them with a bottle of water and a level of essence, you get a potion of that effect. And the level of essence you use determines the amount of time of the effect that you get, with extreme essence being a full 25 minutes. Furthermore, if you make one of the same time level of each potion, you can combine them all together into a single potion that does all of them. So, even though we are out of seeds to make, we will still get some potential use out of this drawer of extreme essence that we have. I'm not sure, but I think this fine fellow was the first person to give a comment on the Prelude video. The very first person to comment on regrowth. I think. Not sure. I might be wrong. Well, I finally ran into a weird case of routing. Had to run this pipe through the neighboring room because this room down here is not in use. So yeah, I guess that's a little bit of a blessing for us having to switch over to these opaque tiles because it'll be hidden now. So that's good at least. Just to save on a tiny bit of memory, 
I made myself an obscuring key for the functional drawers down here. It is just made of a regular key and an eye of ender, and what it does is it hides the texture of the things on the storage drawer, turns it all into this set square pattern, just saves a little bit of memory. Following this person's advice, I'm probably going to be splitting this project up into two or maybe even three episodes, depending on how editing goes. Oh boy. Enjoy yourself. Aha! We have something new here. This Essence of Amber gives me Amber-Bearing Stone, and the only real use that has, other than uh, being transformed into Cinnabar to get us our Cinnabar Seeds, if you remember that, the only real use it has is being smelted into Amber. Yeah, is being smelted into Amber, but it is a furnace recipe. It is not... It, it can't be done in our smelteries. And amber is useful for a bunch of things. So, I have built myself that energized smelter I told you about. It's all just very simple things you've all seen me build before. And I have run a cable under the ground all the way over from in here. Yes, I was just lucky that, you know, when I, when I was digging the tunnel, I poked my head up randomly every so often, and this is where I got it out. And it happened to be right under a cable line, so. And as you can see, I swapped out all of our diamond cables. I figured that the, the soft green glow power indication of mechanism cables might be slightly less source of those OpenGL errors and the lasers, and they carry 10 times more than the diamond kinesis pipes, and they don't have the problem where if you build a square of them, they can get caught in a loop, and they can be redstone controlled for machines that are constantly on but rarely used, like this air compressor. So, that is all very nice. Okay. Now, let's figure out, first of all, if I just set this thing to input from the top, will that, if I, maybe I need to set auto-eject? Nope. That does not pull from the inventory. So, instead what I need to do is I need to say set the back to input. And then I can use this logistics pipe. I know logistics pipe is an actual proper mod. I shouldn't call these logistics pipes, but I'm, I'm gonna call them because they're called logistical transporters. And uh, there we go. So that is Amber being furnished. Now, how about we do at the front, just to make it easier on me for the routing. Okay, and I think I need to set that to, yeah, that's set to eject. Oh, it's not ejecting because I haven't set up the storage drawer for it yet. Okay. But yeah, I'm also probably going to do this for Cinnabar. I'm just going to have it right next to it in the same configuration. We finally got another thing of a, another type of processing down here. I, I I was getting afraid that that would never happen. Yes. I don't like the noise that these things make. Can I hear that from upstairs? I can't. But it might be an opportunity anyway to show this thing off. Muffler? Is it muffling? It is. It's just two enriched alloy, a steel dust, and some glass. Okay. Steel dust, I believe. I believe that can be done in an enrichment chamber. Hmm. 
No, I am going to need to make a crusher, I guess. Well, what does crusher cost? That's not too expensive. Okay, let's do that. I think that would finish off a quest anyway. Yeah, this basic energized machinery quest. Very, very nice. So, let's make... Yes, I might not cut all of this out in post, just so you can see how often I'm getting that OpenGL error. It's a little bit annoying. Crucia. Yes. The Crusher, as you may or may not be able to tell from the name, crushes things. Imagine that. It can do that one enrichment chamber recipe that makes powdered obsidian, and it can do a couple of other things, like uh, it's used in the biofuel processing. If you ever need powders and dusts of some metals, like we do, like well, like we do in the recipe that we needed, it can do that. Uh, it can get you string out of wool. It can deconvert wool. It gets you this fluid dust, which we're going to need in AE. It's also the source of our silicon here. Yeah, it's a it's a bunch of kind of intermediary processing uses. Basically, it's everything that a pulverizer can do. If you've ever played with thermal expansion. Anyway, let's get our. Oh. Oh dear. Oh, I need eight more steel because we're going to need eight more muffler upgrades. That is not a sexy wom noise like the infusers. And while I'm here. What? Why did you... The sound kind of bugged, I guess. It should keep on going clunk clunk. Yeah, the steel powder. It's just a bunch of easy stuff. I think I bunged a load of this in here. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's see if I can... Well, I can't get that sound back. Let me go to the energized smelter and see if that's still going. No, it is not. No, it is not. Hmm. Maybe if I start and stop the crusher, the sound will return and we can see how well these muffler upgrades work. Okay. Well, let's just see how many it takes. Yes, and this is how this is how uh, these things work. When you open it up, you click the upgrades button, you put the upgrade in, and it will gradually load in there, and it will tell you what these upgrades do and how many of them you need to reach max. So these muffling upgrades, apparently you need four of them to make a machine completely silent, and each one you put in before that will just make it quieter and quieter. Yes. Okay. There you are. This room is a little bit special. I decided I have so much metal, I might as well use some of it for decorating. So you get the nice copper room. Mmm. Enjoy yourself. And we are almost done. Ah, a fellow elf hater. Your room is made of nice, soothing blue tin with coal lamps. As suits a, a elf, hater, dwarf person. I, I don't know. God, I'm exhausted. <sighs> okay, last one. This one had a plot free. I'm fairly certain there's no more magic crop seeds, so I just put down some utility crops. 
cactus, sugarcane, nether wart, and wheat. Useful for a bunch of things. <sighs> okay, last one. I don't know if you're watching all this garbage, man, but... Well, I'm proud of you for getting where you are in your life. Okay. All right, the hopper hawk. The hopper hawk. Don't forget the hopper hawk. Okay. Well, that's it. We officially have automated all the things. Well, we've automated all the crops anyway. Oh, yeah. I don't think there's any rooms that are hidden in the center of it, but you can see how many rooms there are. It's a lot. <sighs> this, I think, I am comfortable calling a mega project. It was... It was freaking... This took forever. This took forever. Put you away. Yeah. It's automating the production of all of this. And that's just the fields. I mean... The production floor, it's a lot more compact, but I mean, look at this gun. And that's not even all of it. There's another input feed down below here. Oh, uh, yeah. I've, I've had to eyeball this logistical sorter here, because it just barely keeps up. Like, you'll see it getting backlogged here, but then, like, oh, well, I mean, oh. I might have to upgrade that chest a little bit, because it gets a little bit full. Still, eventually it catches up, and then, yeah. But still, definitely glad that's buried where I don't have to listen to it. These energized smelters, they actually more or less keep up very efficiently like sometimes they'll be idle for a couple of seconds and sometimes they'll get pretty full up but i've never seen them reach complete fullness and i've never seen them like be empty for really long periods of time very good balance very lucky oh. i'm actually kind of proud of this liquid uh smelting system not only is it very effective and relatively compact, but it's kind of pretty. All the liquids flowing where you can see them like that. It's not like the casting channels where they're in control things. It almost looks kind of like gloopy, like big industrial piping. I don't know if I'm going to be facading it all up or not. I guess I'll try it off camera and I'll see how it looks. But still, yeah. That is a legit mega project we just finished. Ugh, oh, it's mine. It's all mine. All the thousands of blocks of iron and the uh, and the collection of and the stack overflow, it's all mine. Ay, 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 and I never want to do it again. <laughs> I think that's that might just be the biggest project of this entire pack. So that means we get to go back to doing fun things, I guess. Next episode, um how about we go back to Thomcraft? Next episode, we'll go back to Thomcraft. We'll set up that infusion altar. That sounds like fun. I'll see you then.